Now, in this hospital, most of the blood samples are collected using the Vacutainer system. Now, on the table here, we have some basic equipment which is going to be required for collecting blood by the Vacutainer system. You're going to need a tourniquet. It is usual to swab the patient's arm down with spirit. And at the end of the procedure, you're going to need a cotton wool ball, which the patient will actually apply pressure to, to make sure they don't leak blood from the venipuncture site. And perhaps the end, in some instances, a band-aid will be put on to cover the, the venipuncture site. Now down here we have some of the basic equipment for the collection of blood. And we have here the vacutainer holder, we have the, the needle, and we have just two of the several sample tubes which are used in this hospital. I'll show the rest of them later on in the discussion. Now first of all, let me show you the needle. The vacutainer needle has in fact got two needles molded together. And what you do is you twist one cap off, the plain clear cap, and you'll see here a piece of rubber. And that part of the needle, which has got the screw thread, goes into the vacutainer holder in this manner like this. And you just uh, firmly put it on. The actual collecting part of the needle is this end here. And you can see the bevel and the needle hole. Now, I'm going to sheath the needle now. This is something you should not normally do once you've actually inserted the needle into the holder, because in doing so, you might actually inadvertently blunt the needle. But I'm going to do this, I want to illustrate something. I'm going to take this needle off and illustrate what happens with this sheath. Now, I'm going to pull this sheath back, and you will see that the inner needle is exposed. And when you put your sample tube on, that rubber sheath is pushed back away from the needle point, and the needle point pierces the rubber cap of your sample bottle. If I let that go, you'll see it covers the needle hole. And the purpose of that is to prevent spillage of blood between the various sample specimen pots you may use. Now, I'm just going to put this tube here onto that needle, okay? And you'll see it get pushed up. And you'll see that the needle guard, the rubber guard, has been pushed up towards the hub, and the needle point has pierced the inside and is within the sample tube itself. Once that has been pierced, that rubber cap, then blood will flow into the tube because there's a vacuum inside these tubes. Obviously, there's a vacuum inside them. Once you pierce them and you allow air to come in, then the tube will not work and you will not be able to get blood into it because you've lost the vacuum. And when I take that tube off, the guard, because it's rubber, springs back and covers the needle. Now, we reassemble this um, holder and needle the way it should be. And there is the thing firmly screwed home. Just imagine that the needle has gone into the patient's vein. And what you then do is to slip one or more tubes in succession through into, the, into the needle guard holder. And then just apply gentle pressure. And once the rubber seal has been pushed back and the inner needle exposed to the vacuum, then blood will flow into the vet, into the sample tube. And then you pull it off, and you can then put in as many other tubes as you wish in the same manner.